right. So I think what I'd like to talk about first, because a lot of you had questions, I understand, um, is on the syllabus, I mean on the calendar. So let's just take care of that first.
and then at 2 o'clock you get to be with me and we're going to talk about that midterm packet that you all got. Did y'all all get that? Okay, so bring that with you on Friday. It'll be, you probably won't be here all the way Okay. All right, so got that on that first week. Okay, the second week you can see here dosage count. Uh, then there's a lecture time. Uh, then uh, there's, uh, we're going to have a class on study, study skills. Here's med administration. Ms. McAdoo is doing that. And then on Thursday the 13th, not Friday the 13th, Thursday the 13th, you're back in the computer lab. So if you are group two, therefore if your name starts with M and back, you're going to come in the morning. Y'all get to sleep like that day, okay? Then we get switched. And we're going to have a person here from the, the uh, company that's going to talk to you about how to do prep you and utilize in your book. So you're going to come at that time. The reason it says mandatory is because it's counted as your clinical hours. So that's going to come there. And then one week on the a week from Friday, you've got your med term exam. And we're going to talk more about the med term exam in just a little while. So at 9 o'clock, you'll have that. And then you'll have some more lectures. All right? And then I'm just going to start highlighting. I'm not going to go over every single week like that. Almost every Tuesday is lecture day for what's called Nursing 1010, which is your adult <coughs> nursing one. Almost every Wednesday, except for the first few weeks, is your pharmacology days. So you'll have pharmacology lectures on that day. Now, I will talk for a minute about Skills Lab. I don't know which group you're going to be in yet. The important thing is on those papers, if you're taking the PTC class that you're happy to be in class like Monday and Wednesday afternoons, you will have to come to Skills Lab on Monday. If you're not, we'll probably put you on Wednesday. It just depends on how many of you are enrolled. You won't come to both days. You will only come if from your assigned time. Some of you will be 8 to 10, and some of you will be 10 to 12. It just depends. I'll have to separate those later. So if you have Skills Lab on Monday, you don't come to Skills Lab on Wednesday, and vice versa. If you have Skills Lab on Wednesday, you don't come on Monday. Okay? Y'all understand that kind of now? I know a lot of you have questions about that. And you'll have one of these times. You won't come to both. There is only one day that that's different, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, I try to highlight things that are really, really important, like here's your first barn exam. Uh, again, there's another computer lab. You notice it says group one, group two, so now you know who's in group one and group two, all right? And then I'll talk about midterm exam in a minute. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm just going to skip over to August the 21st. And I'll skip down because you see here is 1010 day, here's 1002 day. We don't have clinical yet, so I've got some other 1010 here. On August 21st, skills lab and clinical seminar. You notice I, it says 8 to 12 instead of the 8 to 10, the 10 to 12. So everybody will come from 8 to 12 on that one skills lab only day. And then the same thing on that Wednesday. So if you're in skills lab on Monday, you'll come 8 to 12 that one day, just that one day. The same thing on Wednesday. If you have skills lab on Wednesday, you're going to come from 1 to 5 that day only. It's the only time you're going to be here those full four hours. Okay? And then... Group A and B on clinical. I'm sorry, Miss Manning is old and she gets these. I call them my private summers. So guess what? I gotta come out of that. Ooh, Lord <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No progesterone. Or estrogen. Anyway. All right. So clinical. You're either going to be in group A or group B. I don't know yet who's going to be in which group when. If you're planning a wedding, or, you know, don't get married with the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but anyway, 
If you have an absolute problem with you need to know which group you're in or something, please come and see me early about which group. Because what's going to happen is one week, group A goes to clinical. And if you're in group B, you don't have any class at all Thursday or Friday. All right? But then it switches. So if you're in group B, you've got clinical here, but group A does not. Okay? Y'all understand? So you won't go both those times. You're either going to be in group A or group B. And you go to clinical every other week on Thursday and Friday. So there are some weeks where you'll have to be somewhere five days a week. There are some days, though, some weeks you only have to come one to three days a week. It just depends on where you are. So every other week you get some days off. We do have one week here we don't have skills lab because we've got Labor Day in here. So we, I just chose not to do that. So you're off. The other thing I want to talk to you about is spiritual perspectives. You notice it does not start till the 23rd of August. So if you have already taken spiritual perspectives, whether you are re-entry students and are, or if you were a uh, Gen Ed student last semester and you took spiritual perspectives already, you don't have to go to that again. So those days, those of you that are fall into those two categories, you will not come till 10 o'clock. But the rest of you that have to take spiritual perspectives in like an eight week course, you'll come at eight and you'll be in here eight to 10, okay? So y'all understand that okay? Okay. You notice you'll have clinical paperwork. It, after each clinical, you'll do clinical paperwork and it will be due the Wednesday after you have the clinical. So if you're group A clinical, you'll have clinical paperwork due on this Wednesday at 10, because not ever, all of you have to be here at 8. So then if you're group B, your clinical paperwork is due the next week at 10 o'clock. Now as the time progresses and you don't have spiritual perspectives, your clinical paperwork will be due at 9 o'clock. So let, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so here, and there's fall break. You already got a trip clean. Don't call me that way. I'll be on the beach. This is my beach time. Some of the times we write down what's in skills lab. I'm going to be giving you the list for the first part of skills lab uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. So some, it'll tell you what it is. Um, here we go. Spiritual Perspectives, their last day is October 4th, I believe it is. Yes, that's the last one. No, my bad. October 18th. There it is. That's your last one for spiritual. Then you're done with that. So after that, you don't have to come to class until 9 o'clock. We change your time. So please note that if you are not attending Spiritual Perspectives, starting October 25th, class will start at 9 instead of 10. And your paperwork will be due at 9 o'clock. So that changes just a, a subtle bit, okay? Not too, too much. We have clinical makeup. So, you know, hopefully if you don't miss any clinical, guess what? No clinical makeup. All right, we'll talk more about clinical another day. All right. And then last but not least, you are at Thanksgiving and then you're done by December 6th. So then you're out for the month of rest of the month of December. This December 6th is makeup exam. So if you don't miss any exams, you don't have to make any up. So actually, you'd be done December the 5th if you don't miss any exams. Um, so you're done. And then usually we always start back the day after New Year's Day. I had to think, what is it? Uh, New Year's Day. This means sometimes it's a little busy. All right. All right. Any questions about the calendar? Yes, ma'am. July 21st. Let me find July 21st. Uh, that is probably means you don't have anything that day. 
Yeah, because most of the time, remember I told you y'all are off? Most, at least every other, until we start clinical, you're off, off almost every Friday. Now, here's the deal about, I want you to go ahead and talk about med medication terminology, terminology exam. So I'll go ahead and talk about it. So you've got one a week from Friday, right? If you pass it the first time, you have to make 90%, I think is what it says in the syllabus. We're going to look here in a minute. If you pass it the first time, guess what? You don't have to take number two. Because notice it says, if needed. If needed. So you pass it the first time. I kind of jokingly say it's like if you go to Kentucky and play basketball, you're one and done. Um, so same thing with midterm. If you take it the first time and pass it, you're done. You don't have to take it anymore. So where it says midterm exam two and midterm exam three, you don't have to come for those, either one of those. Okay? The same thing is true for dosage calc, and we'll talk more about that here in a minute. Did that answer your question? Any other questions about the calendar before I go on to the syllabus? Are y'all okay? Do y'all need to have a break? No. Okay, because now's a good time. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the 10 10. All right, so we'll do that. We'll take a little break, all right? So we're going to talk about this syllabus right here. Okay? I'm not going to, I'm not going to infringe my, your, insult your knowledge and read you every single thing. Y'all are grown people, and I'm not going to read to you, okay? I want to insult your intelligence. But here's your table of contents. So any guidelines that talk about skills lab or clinical lab, those are your pages. And we're going to kind of glance at some of those. And uh, your RCPs. This is a list of all your lectures. They're pretty much in order of how they're presented. Just know that sometimes something happens. Sometimes that calendar can change. You know, if something happens and we lose power at the school, did they talk to you about getting the alerts and all that sort of thing? Okay. So something happens, maybe the water main breaks and we can't have school. Just know that sometimes we have to change the lectures around and you'll get an email regarding that. So it's a really important thing to always, always check your email several times uh you know first thing in the morning and you know in the afternoon later on uh, you can you know uh, i'm not going to go ahead and phone some class you know don't be shopping for your wedding dress if you're going to get married all right course description talk, talks about everything that we're going to do today we're going to talk i mean uh, this semester the legalities part of it, ethnical part of being a nurse, uh, cultural part, anatomy, uh, talks about how long it is, how many hours, 122 hours of theory. Now some of that's like right now, this is two hours of theory today. Uh, skills lab, you've got 22 all total. Uh, clinical, you got 112. Some of that is kind of counted and not necessarily in the actual hospital part. And then that talks about the hours. All right, then you have a list of our outcomes for our course. All right, demonstrate the steps of the nursing process. You'll be finding out that, and mostly from Ms. Mizell, talking about care plans. Demonstrate beginning health care teaching skills. You're going to have to do a teaching paper for a patient. Uh, value based, culturally competent, and caring professional nursing care. Um, that would be from some of your lectures, like safety and all kinds of stuff on that. Demonstrate the role of a professional nurse when providing fundamental nursing care in various settings. Demonstrate self-direction for personal and professional growth uh, in fundamental nursing care and apply the basic principles of pharmacology in providing nursing care. You will be giving meds this semester. All right. Then this, again, lists all of our names here. And then when the course ends, and I know it says course end date December 8th. That's the official time when I have to have your grades in. Um, there's the numbers listed there again. All right. That's not going to go into 
that. You know you have to make a C to pass. Miss Manning has a saying, C means continue. Also means commencement. One of the other students said that. Miss Manning was not an A student. It is very hard to be an A student in nursing school. And you see the grading is like a 77 is to have a, is passing, not a 75, a 77. You have to attend, and we're going to talk more about attendance here in just a moment. Oh, here's the page about grading. That's what I was just talking about. Academic dishonesty, you know, you can't, no plagiarism. You don't want to cheat off your friends. Um, cheaters never win, and that's what your mom said. Um, I, um, I was always afraid to cheat. I was afraid I'd get caught. I was always trying to do it. So an A is 94 to 100, a B is 96 to 93, a C is 77 to 85, and then uh, anything less than uh, 77 is not passing. And then when we talk about skills lab and clinical, you have satisfactory, unsatisfactory, and I, which is incomplete, you have to redo stuff. All right. All right, there we are on attendance. Okay, so we do have to take attendance. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like taking attendance. You think I'm grown. Y'all shouldn't. I didn't have to take attendance while I was in college. And why are we doing it now? But one of our creditors requires us to take attendance. So guess what? We take attendance. So anybody that misses more, 8% or more, will get a written counseling. Yes, I do have to fill out written counseling forms because people start missing 8%. When you think about 122 hours, what is 8%? Yeah, it's about nine hours. So if you miss nine hours of lecture time, you're gonna get a written counseling. If you miss 12%, you get a written warning. That's about, I wanna say it's like 12 hours, 14 hours. 15%, you get put on probation. Anything more than that, you get withdrawn from the program. So just be aware of your attendance. That's why it's really important to sign those roll sheets when they come around, if it misses you, because occasionally it does, maybe you kind of slip in late, come to whoever's lecture and go, hey, I need to initial that, and we'll let you do that. Sometimes we'll make you put the time if we see you're missing all the time. All right, clinical lab, if you miss clinical, if you miss two clinical days, you get a written warning, three and four, you can be dismissed. You only have 10 full clinical days. So you can think about how much you'd miss if you miss more than four, all right? And then skills lab, uh, you get a written warning if you miss two or more, okay? So you can look at that, how much it is. All right, here's a list of our uh, tests, our exams. Exam number one, and it's on your calendar when it is, I wanna say it's like the third week. Um, each exam is worth 80 points. Okay, so you add all those, there's eight total exams, and then you have a comprehensive that's 80 points. You have something called a HESI exam. It's now worth 80 points. It was worth 50 last year. It's Prep you quizzes, we're going to talk more about those. Ms. Murdoch could talk more about that. All of you come to that computer day next Thursday. You'll be doing prep you quizzes, and they're worth 12 points and HESI case studies are worth 40 points. So you have a total of 852 points available. So you can figure out your grade based on 852 points. There's the prep you. The pre you'll have, uh, I believe, six prep you's that will be due, and those are listed on your calendar. It'll say, usually it's right before an exam, um, it'll say prep you due on Monday at 23.59 or something like that. So what does that mean about midnight, okay? So try to get it done before then because if you don't, your computer messes up and you don't get it done, guess what? You don't get the points. And believe you me, sometimes you think about <coughs> this is, you do prep you and HESI, that's 52 points. That can save your bacon, if you will, if you get them done. If you're, on the, if you're a person that teeters on the edge, if you do this, it can get you off of that edge. So in, at midterm, uh, we'll give you half of the points because there's half of the prep you were due before midterm. The other half we'll post after at the end of the semester. Same thing with the HESI stuff. We'll give half of the points 
at midterm and half of them later. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, yes. 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 Yeah. And then these are each worth four points, the case studies, because they take a little longer to do. Okay? All right. And then you have a, what's called a HESI exam. That's towards the end of the semester. And you'll find out a little more about that as time goes on. And we'll talk about the grading on it here in just a moment. But you'll take that in the computer lab. You'll have HESI case studies, but you'll have this HESI exam towards the end of the semester. Um, and so we'll be talking to you a little bit more about that uh, a little, probably tomorrow. And then here's Skills Lab. This lists the majority of the skills that you'll be checking off on in Skills Lab over the semester. You will have more Skills Lab this semester than you will the rest of the time. You will, in fact, next semester, you have one Skills Lab day. And then the next, last semester, you have one skills lab. So you get all your skills lab basically to graduate for this semester. So there's a lot of skills labs for you to go to this time. And like I say, you'll be getting more information about the skills lab soon. Clinical labs, these are the things that you'll have to do, the requirements. You'll have paperwork that's due every single week. All right? Instructional materials, most of you have already gotten that. Most of you have your textbooks probably. Nursing care plans, if you have not got this yet, don't freak out. You really don't need this till clinical starts. So if you haven't bought it yet, you can wait a couple of weeks. You won't need it till probably week two of clinical actually. Uh, your pharmacology, you'll start using that book this week. So that's your key book. Uh, Hinkle book, your Bruner, um, Hinkle's the author, uh, Med Surge book, you'll start using that pretty soon. Uh, your comprehensive review for NCLEX, it is required that we quite frankly don't really teach out of it, but it is an excellent study guide for you to use for exams. It is also great to use to study for that HESID because that's, that's hard to do. <coughs> And then your Taylor book, that's your fundamentals book. You will use it a lot this semester. And then uh, your drug guide for nurses, uh, you really won't need that till you start clinical either. So if you haven't bought that yet, don't worry about getting that just yet, but you will need it. The software you'll need is the Course Point Plus. Not just plain Course Point. Some of you bought that. We'll need to get in touch with the uh, Course Point people. But you need Course Point Plus for both. Uh, Taylor's and Hinkle, you need Course Point Plus. So there was a big confusion about that last semester, but you do need Plus. Now, a lot of people have asked me, uh, should I rent my book or should I buy my book? Fundamentals, quite honestly, you're only going to use it this semester. You might use the IV Start skills and the IM skills for the fundamentals the very, very, very beginning of your sophomore one semester. Uh, but the rest of the time you're not going to use it, to be quite honest. I mean, it's right for reference. So if you want to rent that one, if you're wanting to rent your books, that would be the one I would recommend that you could rent that one. I don't know what the price difference is. I really, does anybody know? Yeah, you can rent it for 50 bucks and you can buy it for 85 <laughs> Oh, okay. So it would save you about $30, yeah. basically. So that's up to you what you want to do. I don't really care. But I wouldn't rent the rest of them because you're going to use this med search book that can they'll use it the rest of the time you're here. So I would not suggest that you just rent the med search book. Because you only rent it usually semester to semester, isn't it? Isn't that correct? Am I right at that? Okay. But that one you would use the whole time. The the Golanac you use the whole time, the key you use the whole time, that's your farm book. The drug guide you use the whole time. So anything other than your fundamentals book, I would suggest that you Okay. All right. And you'll use these course point pluses, except for the Taylor. You'll use that Bruner one, the plus, uh, the rest of your time here, too, because you do case studies in the other chapters. All right. Yes, ma'am? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's a question for them. 
You said they charged you a little more. I don't know. I thought they were supposed to have it for 18 months, for, especially for the med surge book. I, they're going to be here on that computer day, not tomorrow, but the next Thursday. So ask them, because they'll have a rep here. We can ask that rep person. I think his name's Joseph. All right. Here are your course lecture outlines, and it tells you, hey guys, hang on. Um, it tells you what chapter you'll be having. So when you have your intro to nursing lecture, um, I'm not sure what day that is. I think it's next week. Um, it'll be chapter one of your Taylor book. So this lists what chapter each of your lectures come from. Okay, so if you go, oh gosh, I don't know what I'm supposed to study for that lecture. Here it is right here. If there's something that's specific pages, um, like on my cardiac lecture, I do the cardiac lecture. Um, you notice it's not the whole chapter. You've only got these pages for the cardiac. Okay? Alright. Here's exams. This is page 3.13. Here's each one of your exams that are listed and what are the lectures that are covered under those exams. Okay? <coughs> Also on page 3.14, here's again our faculty listed. It tells you where their office is, their phone numbers in their office, and our emails. Emails is a great way to get in touch with us. I generally, I didn't this weekend because it was messed up and I couldn't get my emails. But I will respond to you pretty quickly. I check them over the weekend even. Okay? They don't get it fixed. I mean, I'll check it this weekend. All right, skills lab, I'm not going to go over that a whole lot, but just know that this is how you are graded. You will come to skills lab that first week. You'll do hand hygiene, gloving. You, you'll learn how about giving a bed bath, bed making. All these things are the skills that you see listed here is that you'll be doing. Um, you'll do a physical assessment. You'll be doing catheterization, a male and female catheterization. Now, don't be freaking out. You're not going to do that on each other. <laughs> I know you're going to say, whoa. Uh, there's not that many guys in here, and you guys are thinking, oh, my God, there are all these people going to stick something in my you know what? But no. Uh, and you'll, you'll do that on a mannequin, all right? Uh, physical assessment, you will do that on each other. We'll find you a partner and you'll do a physical assessment on, you know, Vosky Bursky, okay? And um, you'll we'll remove IVs, we'll learn how to take vital signs, your blood pressures, apical pulses, uh, and then a sterile dressing change. You'll do that, and again, all that's on a mannequin. When Miss Manning was in school, we had to put tubes down our throats. Worst thing ever. Just saying. Anybody ever had an NG tube? Worst thing ever. We used to have to do it to each other in nursing school. It was terrible. Terrible. Thank God they quit that. So you will have to start IVs on each other next semester. Breathe, breathe. Okay, this is your clinical packet. These are the things you'll be graded on. Just look through that. I'm not going to go into that a whole lot right now because you haven't learned about clinical yet. We're going to be learning more about it. So just skip on over all those pages. You can look at them tonight when you're watching reruns. That's all the time. Okay, then we get into the guidelines. We just showed you the thing for skills lab. These are your guidelines for each one of those skills. So here's what we call basic nursing skills, hand hygiene, gloving, restraints, removing IVs, oxygen equipment, giving enemas. I know everybody wants to sign up to do that. Again, you don't have to do that to each other. Um, removing catheters, collecting specimens. So that we kind of talks about the general. This is how, what we grade you on. These are our guidelines that we grade you on. Here's vital signs, same thing. Be on time, that's important. Physical assessment. When you get to physical <coughs> assessment, and after you you have to do it correct, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit, but um, you'll have to write it up in a nurse's notes. 
and we'll teach you how to do that. So it's just kind of know those are guidelines for every single thing we do. There are skills lab for gloving and dressings, urinary catheter, male and female, and then um, then let's talk very very briefly about clinical. Okay. Guidelines for you'll do a medical diagnosis research. Oh, the first week really. Uh, health teaching. You know, I talked about teaching, and, and that was in the uh, outcomes. And this is your guideline for doing a health teaching activity. And we're going to talk more about that when you do your clinical orientation, really. But I just kind of wanted to let you be familiar with some of those guidelines. Please look over them at some point. So to know what's expected of you. To be successful, we want you to be successful. Care plans, you'll do four of them. Med administration, you're going to give oral. You can give any of these meds after you get your lectures and you've done a check off. You'll give any of those medications. That's usually about your third clinical week. Epic training, we're going to start that really soon. EPIC is the name of the um, company that we document on at the hospital. Um, and so you have two different training sessions you have to go to. So uh, those are required. They're part of your clinical hours. And you'll see that on your calendar, two different days for EPIC training. And then you'll also have a clinical that's a virtual sim. You do that at home in your pajamas. And so you still we made you go to clinical on an extra day and we just found that extra day is pretty useless. So you now get to get added hours of clinical for staying in your pajamas and doing your um, virtual sim. It does take about eight hours to do. That'll be part of your thing that you get from prep you. Uh, there's something called virtual sim and they'll talk more about that when you come to that class a week from Thursday. So this is one you'll do at home by yourself, okay? So it's like a virtual, you got an avatar and you give them stuff, it's pretty cool. All right, any questions so far? All right. We're going to finish this syllabus and then we're going to take a break. We're almost done. All right, med term. Med terminology. We're having that lecture on Friday. We're going to go over that packet and talk more about those different names and how and you've got to learn to spell them so if you're not a good speller you have to spell it correctly because we're a professional organization but you know you don't want to